All right, I think we're set. Okay, decided to not waste everybody's time with drawing graphics. So I've got them up here. Uh, discussion for the day is um, Sun, Chemtrail, and you. And we're certain to piss off a lot of people today for a bunch of different reasons. So uh, let's examine some thoughts here. Uh, our sun, which is drawn here for you, a representation thereof. Uh, I'm, by the way, I'm in the um, EM50 mobile recording studio. It's, it's uh, sunny today. We haven't had rain or any of that stuff yet today, so we're pretty good. Anyway, so let's continue. But we've got lots of chemtrails. Lots and lots and lots of chemtrails. It's this way continuously now. Not merely one layer of chemtrails, but many layers deep uh, going way into the atmosphere. This is being reported from um, uh, all over the U.S. and in, in Europe and uh, uh, all uh, parts all over the planet. We've got uh, these guys going absolutely crazy with chemtrails, so something is up. Here's, here's maybe a few hints as to what uh, might be involved in that something is up. So we can go through it fairly easily. This is a representation of our sun and the planets that it's dragging behind it as it goes through uh, the galaxy. So we have here our sun. We have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and all these, these other guys, right? Neptune and, and Pluto and all the degraded planets. The idea here that I want to show is that the sun is moving through space at uh, interstellar space at a rate of uh, 72,000 uh, kilometers per second. I mean, this is really damn fast. And it's dragging all of us with it, along with all of the other asteroids, all of the uh, things that we call comets. Halley's Comet does not leave our solar system and go walk about. It's stuck in here with the rest of it because it's being drug along by the sun as it goes powering through uh, the uh, uh, <laughs> known universe and uh, in interstellar space. In the process of doing that, a couple of things need to be pointed out. Uh, the only way retro, the only way that any of the outer planets would ever be visible to us is if we have this arrangement. So from Earth, we'll always be able to see the outer planets. If, on the other hand, we had a, uh, a heliocentric uh, orbit, we'd never, we'd only be able to see some outer planets every two or three hundred years for about 30 years at a time, and that would be it. And it's simply because of the way that the sun would block our view of the outer planets. And if we were organized in a heliocentric model, retrograde makes no sense whatsoever. No planet would ever go retrograde from us. It would either be visible or not. It wouldn't have any apparent motion going backwards. It does, though, if you if these are spirals, then those spirals uh, are actually going to provide a retrograde motion. So Earth is retrograde relative to Mars and Jupiter right at this moment. And, and uh, Mercury is retrograde to Venus and Earth. I actually think maybe even Venus is retrograde to Earth at this moment too. Uh, today is April um, uh, 17th, um, 16th, April 16th, Sunday, April 16th. And so... Um, Anyway, so so this is how the this is how our, our solar system is organized. Okay, uh, we're following the sun. The sun is a big giant comet dragging us behind it, and each of our planets can be thought of as sort of like comets. And we're just the way we're dragging the moon around us. Uh, the moon is very atypical though, because the moon actually does orbit right around Earth and not uh, not in a spiral behind us. It's ever so slightly a spiral, but it keeps adjusting. So somebody's up there tweaking things. Anyway, um, that's not the subject of this discussion, though. Subject of this discussion is what's going on with chemtrails, the sun, and you. At the moment, uh, we're getting hammered by chemtrails all over the planet. They're just laying these things up there as thick as they can. When they don't have them, though, up here uh, north of 47 degrees latitude, uh, when those chemtrails are not there and we get to see the sun set in the afternoon without chemtrails, it is an incredibly intense white sun. It is larger than it has been in the past. Uh, it is very brilliant and uh, burning, very burning very rapidly. So very uh, much uh, loaded with actinic rays. And uh, this is the reports that we get out of people that are even north of us in Alaska and so on. And they say it's the same effect. If you get out into the sun for a few minutes, A, it's very white, very big, uh, the, very intense and very burning. Uh, very rapidly. So uh, just kind of a, a new development in that regard. Now, uh, the reason that this is developing uh, without the chemtrails and we get this effect 
has to do with this, the area that the sun is going through in, its, uh, in, in the interstellar uh, space. Now, we need to know the only place that there's a vacuum is directly here behind the sun. So only in this cone here do we have any kind of a vacuum and that's where we measure the vacuum because here on Earth we've been shooting all of our rockets and stuff off into this area here uh, because we can't get out of the solar system because the sun is dragging us too fast. So no, the voyagers will never leave the solar system besides which they'll never penetrate into the interstellar media. They don't have enough oomph in them and it's not a vacuum. So there only exists a vacuum here behind the sun. Uh, as it's dragging us along through this interstellar media. Now, the sun has gone into a period where it does not have the sunspots. It's going into a lower uh, solar irradiance. This is a period of uh, solar quiescence, if you will. This coincides with the orbits of uh, Jupiter and Saturn um, being on the same side, so to speak, of the, of the sun relative to Earth. So, uh, let's look up here. If this is Earth and we have Jupiter up here on its orbit and we have Saturn here usually they're directly opposite in relation to us and we just go through them and don't have any kind of a problem. Now though these guys are both over on the same side of the Sun relative to us and so they're distorting our perceived orbit. They're elongating it and they're deepening it away from the Sun because bear in mind Jupiter and Saturn are down here so they're not only pulling it out of shape this way they're also distending it down this way some drawing us even further away from the Sun and so that that happens every 420 years as this as they they both Jupiter and Saturn have very slow long uh, periods here and as they go through this um, period it just happens to coincide that for about a hundred years they're going to be on the same side of the Sun relative to Earth and they're going to distort our our orbit into a um, uh, uh, an ice age uh, at the bare minimum a minimum <laughs> the bare minimum a minimum anyway so other aspects of what's going on here I don't know if you can see it uh, adequately I'm assuming so uh, but we have these little blue lines coming along here. These little blue lines represent uh, interstellar media being plowed through by our sun. They represent the energy coming around the sun that causes it to flare up and get, get very hot and thus give off all of the light and the heat because our sun is not a nuclear reactor. It is not self-perpetuating. If it wasn't moving, it would be black and cold. Um, well, it's cold anyway, relatively. Anyway, though, so our sun usually has all this activity around it in its plasma, and that plasma is caused by it going through interstellar space. When I was born, um, and up until about, let's just say, uh, the 19, late 19, let's just say the early 1970s, okay? Sometime in the 1970s, our sun, in going through space, got out of an area that made it yellow. That started going through a transition period and now in the say the 1990s it, er it entered a period of, uh, where it's now white and it's becoming increasingly white. So the last of the yellow left in like 1997, 98, 99 and it became a very white sun thereafter. And so we have different characteristics for this. Uh, higher UV and so on. For instance, it's wiped out all the frogs around here. It's destroyed amphibian life all around the planet. And it's changing uh, life forms, causing um, mutations, new, new species to pop up, old species to die, all of this having to do with the nature of the energy coming around the sun. Because, bear in mind, as that energy comes around the sun, it comes down into where we all live. So, um, as the... Um, as the energy comes down here, it's going to get, usually it would be distorted somewhat by this plasma around the sun, be mellowed out, uh, you know, not magnified. It would be uh, uh, just a little bit dampened down. Now we're getting all kinds of cosmic rays that are just coming right around because the sun itself is in a quiescent mode. And so its plasma is much closer to its uh, skin, so to speak. And so a lot of these uh, cosmic rays are coming on in here. Cosmic rays cause clouds. 
Cosmic rays cause all kinds of changes in our atmosphere. These guys are coming in like mad and they're pouring in like mad because our sun's gotten into a quiescent period. Plus, it's now into an area of space, interstellar media, that is different from when it was in the interstellar media back here uh, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and prior to the 70s. Um, and it also was in a different period of interstellar media sometime in the uh, uh, pre, let's just say, uh, uh, pre-30, uh, well, no, let me see, I have to look at 150 BC, 150 BCE, so that we're at, uh, you know, Etruscan times, Roman times, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, during that period of time, as we were transitioning into the early Roman period, uh, somewhere in there, we entered another, entered the yellow, yellow sun um, uh, intensity period in its, in its uh, transit through uh, space. And so our, our sun was very much yellow, and we had an entirely different color of oceans. Well, the oceans were, were a lot darker because of the nature of our atmosphere and also the nature of the sun and its light at that time. The light has to do with the media that it's going through. So at the moment, we're going through a media that causes our sun to be white. This white um, effect comes from the intensity and also from all of these rays passing around it. Some of these uh, uh, cosmic rays must be causing the sun itself to have uh, reactions as well as our planet. Okay, so we've got that part of it. Our orbit is bent down, distorted by Jupiter and Saturn, so we're going into a ice age and a, in a uh, solar minimum. The solar intensity is down. It allows more cosmic rays to come whipping around the sun. They come back into this area where we all live. There, these extra energies from space are causing problems and changes here on Earth. And it's my supposition that this is going to really intensify because the Russians had said about, I think it was probably 1981, uh, that we were entering into this different area of interstellar space and that the heliosphere, uh, that area around, the, the atmosphere around the sun that extends out bazillions of miles, uh, was changing. And um, that uh, it was changing due to the nature of the media that we were going through at that point. So I suspect it's going to continue to change, and I also suspect that chemtrails are a response to that. And thus, because we're now entering into a period of time where it's really getting intense and coming on in and everybody's getting all jittery and there's issues and problems and so on, uh, I think the chemtrails are going to ratchet way up, as we've seen. Or rather, let's put it another way. We've seen the ratcheting of chemtrails way up these last four months. And uh, also these last four or five months, we've seen emotions start getting really out of hand globally. And I think that the two are in combination. So I believe that at some level, uh, or no, I don't believe it. I, it's my conclusion at some level that the um, chemtrails uh, are there to dampen down the energy, to break down uh, some of the whatever it is that's getting past the sun and coming on down to affect us. That uh, I think that the chemtrails are a, a filter, a sky filter, if you will, uh, to try and uh, keep this down. Now, here's, here's our issue, okay? Uh, there's people out there like David Wilcock and this guy, uh, Corey Good, and they're on um, uh, YouTube and they're out there uh, on their websites and stuff telling you that, um, hey, Ascension's coming. If you're one of the lucky few, however many that might be, I guess there's some debate. Uh, you know, it's 300,000 or 3 million or something, I don't know. But some small number of humans uh, supposedly are going to be uh, luckily ascended to, or they're going to go through Ascension. And by ascension, I think these guys are talking something close to like rapture or something like that. I'm not really sure. They're very vague about it. They don't really have a um, clear definition. They say you've got to do the work in order to be one of the, and so on, but they don't ever specify what the work is. So I'm not a big David Wilcock or Corey Good fan. Now, um, uh, Corey Good thinks that Dr. Stephen Greer, the disclosure guy, uh, thinks that Corey Good is uh, crazy, and I don't believe that's the case. I think Dr. Stephen Greer uh, uh, has made a very clear statement that we can't trust Corey Good's rem remembrance of anything because he admits to having his mind wiped and re-implanted re all the time by these blue fuckers from Avianville somewhere out in space. And if it isn't the Avianville guys, it's some of these Mesoamericans that got zapped up and are working with uh, the Avianville guys. 
and uh, they keep wiping his mind out and changing shit and zapping him all the time. Well, you know, Dr. Screven, Stephen Greer's got a real good point, uh, the, and I agree with it, that the first time you discover that your mind's been wiped, unless you have personal protocols, you'll never know for sure if it hasn't happened again. So you can never trust anything you remember from that point on. So, um, you know, it's like, so Corey Good's uh, remembrance of anything has to be questioned simply because he admits that they're screwing with his brain or with his memories and uh, wiping his uh, memory out all the time. Uh, so anyway, but in any, in any event, here's the, here's the, um, uh, the irritating part of this. Uh, they are walking around saying that there's going to be a solar event sometime between now and like 2024 and that this solar event is going to cause ascension. And it's going to uh, somehow kick our planet into another density. And, it, and let me tell you, these words are, are um, contradictory. Okay, if you're ascending, you're not becoming more dense. You're not going from a fourth density to a fifth density and ascending. If you're doing that, you're descending. So their language is very um, uh, contradictory, very mixed up, uh, very misleading, in my opinion, of course. You know, and so this could start a big fight. Because uh, I basically think uh, David Wilcock and Corey Good are causing problems here, uh, in the sense, or could be causing problems. There could be issues. People that might listen to them th might think, "Oh, oh, I'm going to be, um, uh, I'm going to be one of the good guys. I'm going to ascend. I don't really have to worry about frying if the uh, sun gets so intense. I don't have to worry about the ice age. I don't have to take any any precautions against the um, uh, craziness that's going to go on around me as the as regular humans have their brains fried by all this extra energy coming in from." Uh, space if the chemtrails go away, if that's what the chemtrails are for, but I'm really pretty certain that the chemtrails are there to screen out some form of radiation. At least that seems to be uh, um, a good conclusion based on uh, the empirical evidence of how they're reacting to the increased uh, radiation coming out of the sun. Increased radiation, more chemtrails. Ergo, they're probably related. Um, since it's consistent. Uh, anyway though, and you also have Corey Good and and Dave, or I don't know about Corey Good, but you have David Wilcox saying that the chemtrails are going to go away because the good guys have won, because the you know Trump's president and the um, and the deep state has uh, fallen on its sword and is bleeding out somewhere in a hole in the ground, and it's like no, uh, that's not happening, <laughs> you know that that's bullshit, absolute bullshit. The um, chemtrails, if anything, have intensified fivefold. I kid you not, fivefold here, uh, and we're getting hammered by bizarre, strange weather. Is it related? Probably. You can't do something and not have it be related all within the same atmosphere. So I have issues with Corey uh, Good and David Wilcock for those and other reasons. And, uh, and the statements they're making I find to be potentially uh, dangerous in the sense that they might uh, give people a wrong idea that um, they shouldn't be paranoid about these weird changes and, and the strange things that are going on. Also, let me point out, David Wilcock said Kim Drills were going to go away. He's flat out wrong. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure he's got an explanation for it, but he's flat out wrong. They haven't gone away. They've gotten worse. And it's getting uh, worse by the day. And our weather is getting stranger by the day as the intensity of the sun is getting a little bit more bizarre by the day. And so, uh, okay, so, uh, and so that's it. Maybe I'll chop in my uh, doggy deer story at the end of this or something, put it in the front. Um... But uh, so this is what's going on. The chemtrails and you, the chemtrails are there on the, on the part of the powers of the bee to screen out some kind of radiation, uh, something. Uh, I don't think that they're trying to screen out radiation that would in any way make you ascend. So that I don't think is a, is a big issue. Uh, and this is, uh, as I say, this is the layout and what's actually going to happen here is anybody's guess, because we've never been in, as far as I know, this area of interstellar media before. And I don't call it space. I try not to because it's not a big vacuum the way we think of space back here behind the sun. Uh, so anyway, we're doing what we can here to uh, deal with the UV issues because there's a hell of a lot of new UV in the planet and uh, coming down into our atmosphere. Our atmosphere has been shaken repeatedly and it's uh, disingenuous on the part of people in woo-woo to run around and say, all will be well, you're going to ascend in a greater density and end up somewhere where your thoughts will be able to create roses uh, in your bathwater on command. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I mean, I don't mean to get too much on his case, but you know, these guys irritate me uh, for a lot of different reasons. <laughs> a lot of this shit is bullshit, guys. Um, 